So there's a big a direct connect event. This is like the mega foundry preview. Um, you know, I had a chance to do a little bit of a, have an upfront conversation with uh, Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger, processing all that right now. Um, but I'll share some things that I can on the record. And of course, share some of my own speculation because that's always fun. But uh, first and foremost, you know, I, I think this is going to be a victory lap moment with the five and four and talking about kind of the whole IDM strategy. But the pivot really quickly is going to be, well, this is what the world is going to be interested in, okay? The world is going to be interested in, besides the fact that, you know, you're trying to address, you know, supply chain resiliency, trusted supply chain, and all these other items. And, and we're also, you know, we're, we're, we're going to want to see the world address the Sam Altman five to seven trillion dollar supposed needed investment. And we're going to want to understand who are going to be the partners and who are going to be the companies that are going to be capable of bringing leading edge process manufacturing to the West um, at scale. And so everything we're doing, you know, you you got to kind of do the math, Pat, to figure out how do you get from, from where we're at with a $52 billion investment, even with the matching for innovation and R&D that takes it up to about 4X that in spend, up and ramp that up to what Sam, Sam Altman's talking about with five to seven trillion. The reason I keep mentioning Sam, by the way, Sam is going to be on stage at this event. So this is a really big moment. Sam's going to be there. Satya Nadella is going to be there. Um, Ginny Raimondo is going to be there. You've got leaders from companies like, I believe, Pat, and you, you shared this, like Cadence, Synopsys. A lot of IP companies are showing up. And, and um, what's really, really interesting is to get to five to seven trillion, you're really looking at three parts. And everyone's kind of wondering, where did Sam get that number? And it's Foundry, it's data center uh, build outs, and of course it's power. It's actual yeah. global infrastructure that is required to support the scale. We're already seeing you know, the amount of power consumption because of AI, it's doubled, I believe, is the number in about a year's time since uh, we've rolled out. But these are very power hungry designs. So the world wants to understand um, what's the relationship? I think I saw uh, Ed Ludlow on Bloomberg shared something this morning that, that um, Sam is ready to go get U.S. government backing to run to go after his chip venture. And why oh, am I sharing? This yeah. is really interesting, though, Pat. Like, he's showing up on stage with Intel. Intel's got this massive foundry project. You've got the kind of the commerce sector, the person that's driving global commerce, or the spend of the Chips Act. And they're all sitting on stage together, right around this timing when this potential. Five to trillion seven, five to seven, five to five to trillion seven, Pat. Five to seven trillion spend is being uh, so. I'm all in for the speculation here, but my take is there's a really interesting opportunity where someone like Sam could see Intel as the right left to right partner that has everything that he needs, and obviously is also a company what I call kind of a willing partner right now. Because can you imagine Sam Altman validating Intel as the AI partner in terms of building his ASIC blocks? You know, I talked to a reporter yesterday and they asked me a question, could there be an open AI ASIC or like a right. chat GPT? It's like, yeah, <laughs> of course. Um, and, and, and this is kind of where this really interesting sort of competitive stake, you know, I saw a $1,200 price target come out for NVIDIA this morning, but like, does, does Satya, does Sam, does all these companies really want to let Intel, or sorry, NVIDIA become any more powerful in terms of how much they control the AI chips that are going to be going into market, into data centers? There's a lot of kind of these, uh, you know, different powers coming together right now, these forces coming together. And I think a lot of very interesting speculation is going to come on stage. I'll say one more thing. I seriously doubt anything of this nature is going to be announced. This is just me kind of putting together parts and pieces and saying, Wow, you know, Intel has been kind of accused of not hitting the AI opportunity. You've got the most prolific personality in the world on AI going on stage, far enough. I mean, did you see that thing they launched yesterday? Dude, we don't even need to go to events anymore. We just have Dan and Pat talking about Intel IFS day, and it's gonna create a one minute video. Sorry, sizzle reel makers, game over. Um, in fact, this has all been done in a year, so like, I'm super excited about what the implications of this are. And what I'll say is, you know, Pat was very humble, Pat Gelsinger, big Pat, was very humble. He was very, you know, excited to kind of talk about roadmap, talk about execution, talk about packaging versus kind of wafer opportunities and stuff like that. 
but you couldn't help but notice just an optimism, which given the fact that 99% of the AI chip market's going to NVIDIA right now, what's that optimism all about? So that's me doing a little speculation. Yeah, at this point, all we can do is speculate. <laughs> I think uh, if there's going to be something big that's going to be announced, it's being kept uh, really, really uh, tight here. Uh, and, and by the way, if I, if I look at the folks that, that are going to be uh, on stage and, and what they represent, it's it, it's it, it's freaking huge, right? You've got Renee Haas from, from ARM. Uh, you've got the person in charge of, uh, I think he works for uh, Charlie. He works uh, uh, Yuan Jing Li, right? Central Engineering at Broadcom. Uh, we've got... Um, Eric Fisher from Media Tech, Jason Wang, the president of UMC, Art DeGuys, the founder and chair of, of Synopsys. It's interesting they sent uh, uh, him and, and not the new CEO, the CEO of Cadence. Maybe that was the reason because, uh, you know, Synopsys and Cadence are, uh, are big rivals. Oh, and then Synopsys, sorry, Ansys, who's being uh, acquired uh, by 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 synopsis and EDA, course, packaging design IP um, you know it's crazy Pat yeah and by the way uh, you know I had a couple people on X hit me up that what about Nvidia what about you know what about by the way Nvidia is already working with IFS on Ramp C that's the defense contract uh, for the United States uh, while they, I don't know this for a fact I believe the big packaging customer. Uh, that they're talking about is for AWS with uh, Graviton, Tranium, and, and Inferentia. Again, I don't know that. I'm going to speculate. Um, uh, Qualcomm, I do believe, is taking a slow roll on um, on, on IFS, uh, but I do believe if 18A works and the White House shifts critical infrastructure and they roll, roll in smartphones in there, Qualcomm's going to have to do that. And by the way, Qualcomm is the most diversified uh, design company out there in, in terms of its supply chain. They, they're everywhere, and they work with everyone. And I find it hard to imagine that they that they wouldn't work uh, with Intel. But you, you know the way these big deals go, uh, the big kahuna deals, Dan, is, is you get something strategic uh, in exchange, right, for, uh, for this. And Qualcomm is very strategic company than how to play this game. I mean, I'm, I'm dying to know, uh, I mean, if Sam gets up there and Satya gets up there and just talks about milk toast, it's gonna be seriously disappointing, particularly when Altman uh, is out pounding, pounding the pavement on whatever the heck he's doing between ships and data centers and uh, and foundries. Yeah, like I said, did you hear what I said about Ed Ludlow? He tweeted out that Sam's ready to go ask for funding. Yeah, I saw that. I, I saw that this morning. No source, no name, no no nothing. But well, uh, you know, I like to speculate on speculators. Oh, that's good. But yeah, I mean, you know, that's a Bloomberg, thing to do. Bloomberg does tend to get a scoop from time to time. Um, you know, but it is it is very interesting and just how fast this stuff is moving. It's just wild. 